Hello and welcome back to Much Doer Rugby, where we chat about everything rugby. And today we have an extremely special bonus episode for everyone. Uh, we have a professional rugby player, Harlequins through and through. Ross Chisholm is with us today. Introduce yourself, Ross. Hi guys, how are you? Um, Ross Chisholm, Harlequins um, fullback. Play wing has been there for twelfth season coming up now, so just about to start twelfth preseason in a, a week's time. Amazing, fantastic. And um, we hear you've got a lot going on in your personal life as well. You've just had another, is it your third child? Yeah, so we just had a, a little boy eight weeks ago. So that was a bit mad when we went back to playing. Um, he was born, I think, second game in or something. So didn't oh, play a huge, huge amount in those um in those six weeks, because um, it was a bit of a bit, bit of an early birth. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's all good fun. So, yeah, my third. Yeah, but every, everything's going smoothly with that. Everything's fine with that. All, all <laughs> running okay. Yes, yeah, so we're off at the moment. We've got a couple of weeks down time before we start pre-season again and then start the new season. So, yeah, it means I can spend some time with the family and try and get some training in and around changing nappies and feeding <laughs> and... Yeah, and which uh, which your children do you reckon are going to become and things like that? So, but no, it's good fun. Yeah, and which of your children do you reckon are going to become professional rugby, rugby players. players like yourself? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe the middle one. Maybe the middle one. Just to remind everyone before we go into the full um, chat, we are on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So do go and visit us on all of those, and we will have the new website coming up and going live soon. So that's very exciting. So I guess talking about family, Ross, um, obviously you're playing at Quinns with your brother James, um, which must be a real privilege and, and to have such a, a, a great rugby family, it must be so much fun and playing with your brother week in, week out. Um, what do you reckon it is about siblings in rugby? Do you think it's genetics or do you think it's the way that you're almost brought up um, that made you both rugby players and both play, play to such a high level? Um... Well, firstly, it's it's really cool to be able to play with James. He's well, four four and a bit years younger than me. So when he first started at eighteen, I sort of was like starting hopefully play a bit more in my career and playing a bit more first team and stuff. And the first time we played together, I think he was at school, so he was seventeen, and we played in a second team game together, and that 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 was. An amazing experience because you sort of we'd never played together before that moment because of the age gap, um, and sort of just like looking across and seeing him in the changing room was was a pretty special. It was pretty odd, and um, yeah, it's amazing to see him every day because we are a really really close family and we're almost like best friends. So it's really nice. And he lives with we've got a middle brother as well. They live together in Guildford. Um, Ali, my middle brother, we once played for Quinn's A-League, all three of us, which was really, really cool. You sort of sit in the change rooms and it's hard to explain, but you sort of just look across at who sat there and you're just like, this is weird. We, we spent so many hours playing in the garden and playing up the field and beating each other up and things like that. But <laughs> then suddenly we just sat in a dressing room ready to to take the field. So it's, it's an amazing experience and something that we're very lucky to be able to do and I'm lucky to have done the three of us as well at uh, such a high level. Uh, I mean, it's funny because I play 15 wing, completely different almost genetics to James who plays number eight and likes to uh, mix it up with the big boys up front. So <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a little bit different, but I don't know. We've, we've always been a sporty family. Um, we've always played loads of sport. We started playing rugby, I think I was five or six. And Ali and James used to come come along where I played. They used to sort of get involved as well. So maybe that's why, I, I don't know. It's hard to say, but you know, it, it is really cool to be able to play them. Yeah, for sure. No, I find it so... I find like the whole concept of families playing rugby really interesting. Because obviously you've got like the incredible rugby pedigree and families such as yourselves, you know, you've got like the Barrett family in New Zealand, 
And I just find it really interesting how you can have sort of so many rugby players just bred from one family. And I don't know, I mean, you just, you touched on it a little bit, but what do you think would the main aspects of, of growing up that meant that you all came to that such a high level? Obviously you're all, you're all clearly athletes. And as you said, you're very, very sporty, but like, did your parents do any specific things when you were younger or did they just really just encourage you to play sports the whole time? Uh, we were lucky. We were always taken to a lot of sports. The, the main one was kind of rugby, I think, probably because they wanted to get us out of the house. And having the kids myself, you realise that those sporting things on the Sunday and Saturday morning are bruised and tired and aroused. So I imagine that was the first of all mode, get them out, get them tired. We used to play football on a Saturday, rugby on a Sunday. We used to swim to quite a high level as well. Um play cricket, all, all, all those sort of sports. We were just introduced to all of them. Um, and I think we all just kind of fell in love with with rugby, really. And I suppose genetically, we are all quite similar in some aspects. Um, I think we sort of go up in size as we get younger, really. Um, <laughs> but that, that, that kind of always playing together as kids challenging each other and maybe that's why James likes the rough stuff because he was the one that was probably <laughs> getting, um, not not many touches in the ball and things like that and <laughs> so um yeah no it was um we were, we were really competitive as kids we 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 always wanted to win we, we it was never let your brother win and all that sort of stuff so yeah may, may, maybe that's where it came from we were always playing we were always competing with each other we were always trying to be the best and I suppose luckily in some aspects we were you know gifted with a bit of size and myself a bit of speed and things like that so that obviously then pushed the other two and they and things like that yeah it's, it's been a really cool journey yeah cool so um, obviously you're coach at Hayward Heath now but that's like the club that you all started yeah. off at so, so, and then obviously you moved up through the ranks in Quinns. Um, so what, what was that like, obviously playing for Hayward Heath, then making your way through Quinns in the, like, the, you could say the traditional route of going through the academy and then getting into the senior squad and play, and then, yeah, now being where you are. Yeah, I said I started at the age of six at Hayward Heath, played all the way through until the age of 16. Um, I think I started county rugby at the age of 13 or something, because that was the route you went down. You played county rugby at the age of 13 or whatever it was. Played county matches. So I, we played a game against Surrey uh, and the Queen's coaches came to watch and it was Colin Osborne at the time that was my first team coach, who I think he left four or five years ago now. Um, so he spotted me at the age of 13, I think it was, and said, do you want to come along for some to some training sessions? Um, and obviously that was a, a real honour. So my dad took me to Aldershot because that's where we used to train in the army back. And unlike now where there's loads and loads of kids that, that go through the system, it was really select. There was only, I think, five of us at my age and then about 15 of us in the group, because we used to train with a couple of older years as well, at Aldershot, and it was once a month. So we used to go there from the age of 13, sort of kept doing that, and then played at Hayward Heath till 16, played county rugby. I had 16, didn't quite make the cut for the England 16s. Um, but that kind of just spurred me on to say, this is what I really want to do. This is what I want to try and do. And then Quinns became more serious. We started to train more. There was still only a small group of us, but actually the anomaly was that my year, there was nine players, I think, that got signed. So that nine, those nine players were the ones that were training together. So we played like a tournament in France at 17s. Um, which was really, really cool. We got to play Toulouse, uh, Perpignan, teams like that. Um, and, and 
from there I played England 16s and then got signed at, at 18. Um, having left, so I, I went to Brighton College on a rugby scholarship, played there. And then, yeah, at 18, signed for Quinns and never looked back. It was, um, you get signed at 18 and at, at that age, you're just given a house and they just say, there's your house. This is where we're training. We'll oh, see you wow. on Monday. And, and, <laughs> and, and that's literally it. And there was, there was five of us in the house. We were all 18. So didn't have a clue. You in a house wash up, <laughs> cook food. So I was in the house. Luke Wallace. Leicester, oh, uh, yeah. Daryl Marfo, who got a cap for Scotland, uh, Rob Buchanan, I think he's got got capped for England, um, Charlie Matthews, who's mm-hmm. just signed in Japan, um, and then a guy called Joe Trafer, who was at Quinns for a few years, then played at London Irish for a couple of seasons. So, yeah, we all did all right. And then Ollie Lindsay Haig was my year as well. So, England's uh, Will Collier. Was also my year. These those, those guys didn't live in the house, so because they lived pretty anyway. So we had we had a pretty a pretty strong year um, at Quinns compared to some because I think the year above me was Joe Marla, oh. um, Sam Smith. You might remember who, uh, and and George Lowe, who was there. He went on England tour, so. Yeah, it was like a pretty, pretty strong, like little kind of two-year academy, and I was in the academy for two years. Um, and Have I played always... on loan at Isha, which was which was great. Um, Have you always been a sorry, fullback um, slash winger throughout your throughout your playing career? No, so I actually started off as a fly half. Ah. At ABT. Ah. So I play. I played. Half to the age of sixteen, um, went for those England trials at, at fly half, and they said you're you're not going to be a fly half. <laughs> um, so then, so then um, I went to Brighton, and they moved me to thirteen. Played then at the, um, and I played like some count at thirteen, got an England team as a 13 and then I didn't actually play at 13 they put me on the wing so I was I was I think I play I think we played about three or four games and I, I mainly came off the bench on the wing um when we played Italy Italy and Scotland I think was the, the two that I played on the wing and then played another one so yeah um, then I went to the wing having never played wing before my first game on the wing was at uh, was for England in the eighteens, um, which was pretty nerve wracking. And then my then the Quins were like, "We want you to be a fifteen. We think your position's going to be fullback." And I played a little bit growing up, as you do like a hey, TV. You sort of you play fly half, and then you might have a little bit of fullback and things like that. So I played mainly sort of like mainly at ten. I had a couple at the odd the odd thing at like fifteen, and then yeah, my first uh, my first game as a fullback was uh, in a league game, so a second team game for Quinns against Wasps. I think it was at fullback, and. I think that weekend, so we play in, we'd normally play on a Monday night and that weekend, whoever was meant to play got injured or something or something happened. So anyway, I ended up starting. I was 17 years old, never played a game really at 15. And they just threw me, threw me at fullback. And I just, yeah, w- went in and sort of like, then not looked back since. And then I played most of my most of my rugby at 15 and on the wing because they're, they're, now they're quite similar. So what's your favourite position, position that you've been playing? My favourite position, my favourite position, fullback. But I, actually, I do quite like the wing as well. I'm happy being both. And then interesting because actually I've gone full circle and I've actually played a couple of sort of second team games and been on the bench for Quinns and stuff at ten as well. So that right. is um, <laughs> that's always an interesting challenge. Yeah, yeah, it's always interesting. Have you got a good boot then? Or it's kicking all right. off the tee it's... and stuff. 
Yeah, I used to do it at Brighton. Uh, well, I did it all the way to ha- through Hay Teeth and I did it at Brighton as well. Um, and then I did it a bit A-League starting up and then had a couple of bad injuries. So I stopped doing it for a bit. At like a couple of um, an ankle so I kind of in the last sort of like four years or so I've been able to pick it back up again and yeah when when, when I get the chance I'm all right cool well obviously you've been at Quinn's for a really long time now like I don't know well yeah it's literally since Hun- it's 147 appearances yeah exactly. um, which is absolutely mm. incredible obviously um so I guess the first question um, having so many so many appearances, what is possibly a highlight or one of the, or a couple of the highlights of playing for Quinns and and uh, all the matches that you've played? Yeah, uh, it's funny because I look look back on my career now and I I definitely took a lot for granted when I was younger. Uh, I made my my debut at eighteen. I remember that bit. Um, Vividly, it, well, I played in pre-season. We played uh, Connor. I was eighteen, and we played in Edinburgh. And I was eighteen. And it was one of those we were like, oh my god! And then I made my full, full first team debut that season um, against Gloucester. On I actually played on the wing. Um, I was eighteen. I remember playing that game. And Wanakolo was playing. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> is massive um, so that, 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 that sort of like really really stands out in the memory and then again like I think we won we won the European Cup um, and I came off the bench I think I was 20 at the time so I'd like played played a little bit 20 when we won the European Cup came off the bench five minutes uh, experience and then we won a Premier and then the next season after that, I started in the LV Cup final and we won that. And then a couple of seasons later, or the next season, um, I was on the bench for the for the Chad Cup final where we, we lost to Montpellier, I think it was. So they really start, stand out as like big moments. Like we were in a lot of finals and won a lot of stuff. You're we really young and you sort of think, oh, this is the norm. This is kind of just what happens. And we haven't really won that much since so it sort of like brings it back that it was really really special part but I took it for granted whereas now now I don't really and it's always special being able to play in like the big games and things like that um lucky enough to sc- score a couple of times at Twickenham and yeah yeah it, it's just like the big games like Claremont's a really cool place to play at like it's just really really partisan French games it those sort of I'm but lucky to do what I do and I've had an amazing amazing journey and hopefully it will continue for a few more years but some of the uh, memories and experience you take away are just things that you just money can't buy so I feel very very cool well bring bring it forward to Quinn's today what what's it what's the club looking like now in your opinion from like the inside what's like the culture like with um Obviously, did fairly well, sixth place in my, in my opinion. I'm a Quinns fan, so as Ed Maxon may disagree, but he's Saris <laughs> and they're getting relegated, so I can't really say anything. But obviously, how are how how how's it uh, at Quinns at the moment? Um, yeah, today. Yeah, I mean, Guzzi's now been the head coach for. Was it two two and a half seasons, three seasons now? It's weird with this COVID stuff. We lose track of time. Um, but yeah, he he's he's brought in a um, a different culture that we've been used to. Obviously, being from Saris in England, um, like he, he's brought in a lot a lot of experience, especially on the kind of defensive side of things, which we probably needed. And he's he's set out a really good culture. Not that we didn't have one in the past. I think it was just. We just need like a little reset and a little like this is how we're gonna gonna move forward. So he's changed he's changed the squad around uh, a little bit as well. So we've we've got some new some new players in and like the, the, the 
the buzz is really, really good. And I think it's all evident to see that we've got a load of really good, young, talented players coming through in the likes of Joe Marchant, Marcus, my brother, Don Brandt. Like the, the, these guys are the future of the club and they're the guys that hopefully will be lifting trophies in years to come. So I think Guzzi's done that pretty well and the vibe in camp's really, really good. Um, you know, we're, we're building building towards something, hopefully. Um, you know, we'd like to finish in the top four, but that, that that's, always, that's always our ambition. But we know we probably have thrown away too many games in the past couple of seasons that we shouldn't have lost or we should have picked up bonus points or things like that that just stop us being in the, that top four side at the moment because we know we can perform on our day it's just making sure that we pick up those points in those close battles which we have done in the, in the two years I mean we missed out or last season or whenever it was you know by a kick you know, we lost the game by a point or two points and that would put us in the semi-final. So, yeah, we know we, know we need to tidy, tidy those things up and it's going to be really, really exciting again this season. The, the challenges that are going to come um, with Exeter obviously winning yesterday, they're, they're obviously the team to be and what's have been a fire since they've come back from uh, the lockdown. So it, it's going to be a really interesting time in rugby, I think, this coming season. Hopefully, yeah. yeah no, 100%. Um, we're all really excited, obviously, to, to see the teams back out, all, all the teams playing each other again. And uh, certainly after lockdown, it was a great pleasure watching everyone. And um, some of the rugby that was being played was absolutely amazing. Obviously, the likes of um, Marcus Smith and obviously Alex Dombrand and, and your brother having absolutely stunning games for Quinns. Um, so obviously, you've spoken a bit about them and the young talent coming through at Quinns. Um, but I guess my question is, Who's like the best or most difficult or toughest player? I guess you've you've actually personally played against, or someone that really stands out in your mind as, as you know, wow, that is a really really good player, and I don't like playing that guy. Um, there's quite a few. There's no there's no bad bad players when you come up someone in, in the Premiership. You never underestimate who you're up against. Um, there's guys with like different talents, I suppose. Fly fly half, although I don't play directly opposite them, they have influence on what I'm trying to do and how you're trying to manip- they're trying to manipulate you in the backfield. So I mean someone like Danny Cipriani is pretty tough to play against when he's playing a ten because he can just able to change his change the kick that he's gonna put in or push and pull you into different positions. Some tens have got kind of easy reads, so you can see where they're going to kick the ball before they kicked it. Um, but he's always a challenge. The likes of Nolan and Farrell and George Ford, their game is exceptional. So they're, they're always guys you're sort of wary of as a um, as a 15, because they can just push and pull you to where you kind of don't want to be and put you into really tricky situations. So some of, some of the fly halves out there are, are really, really tough and you have to be on your game um, so it's almost like easier when they're running 10 it, it, it's a little bit easier for, for you as a 15 because you, you're not as worried about the backfield but yeah and then on the wing sort of like coming up against people um, Penno from Claremont the French winger he, he's quality like sort of Good racker player. as well for Claremont is again pretty pretty special um, and then someone like a, a Nicky Gonover in, yeah. In, when play against him, you're always like, "Oh my god, this guy can can beat me for pace. He could step <laughs> me. He, he's strong." It, like him and his pump was was pretty special. Um, and the likes of like a Tua Langi or someone like that didn't didn't play a huge amount of games against him because um, he retired sort of in my early early years, but. Um, yeah, I guess there's 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 no there's no easy player to play against, but those are the kind of ones that, that stand out. Awesome. Um, do you, Mackie or Mal, do you have any more questions for us? Well, yeah, obviously, uh, there's been a lot of players coming through Quinn's, kind of s- similar to like the questions Ed asked you, but 
there have been so many players come through Quinn. Who who are some of your favourite players to play alongside? Like who who would be uh, your top players you played with? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, like I've obviously been extremely lucky to play in some some amazing sides with some amazing players. Obviously, the likes of Chris Robshaw, um, Nick Easter, Danny. You know, the, Joe Marler, S- Sinclair, all those guys that have played international rugby are, you look at the change room, you're like, this guy's pretty good. You know, we're going to be okay today. Um, <laughs> and then, the, you know, the caps they've got, the amount of appearances they've got, Mike Brown and Chris Ashton, the amount of appearances they've got, you go, wow, these guys are, are unbelievable. But then it's funny because... Everyone knows how good they are, but it's the guys that you don't necessarily see that when you play with them, you're like these got these guys are like the glue of the team. And there's a couple that really stick out in my career. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, but Marie Fassavalu, who played at six for us for a number of seasons in all our sort of like winning sides, that guy was a beast. Like he's an absolute monster and he would just get us front football all the time and he just had that real fear factor of a player and you just sat in the change room and just going, It's okay, like we've got we've got Mo, he's gonna he's gonna get us some front football and things like that. Um and then just like the the the, the Nick Evans and the centre combinations of Jordan Tanner Hall and George Lowe. I mean George Lowe is one of the best players I think I've played with. I mean never sort of like probably got the accolade that he deserved, but he was just one of those unsung hero guys that just did his job unbelievably well, made his tackles, gave you the ball in space, did those things that maybe people don't recognise because it's not really, really flash. Um, and then you look at the player, the the likes of players today, I mean, you're playing with, obviously I mentioned those England guys, but Don Brandt, who's just got an England, England squad, James, Marcus, People like that, Paul, Paul Aziki, like the, the all, all, most of the players you play with are really good. But there's there's a couple that kind of really really stand out to me. Um, yeah. And then the likes of you know Mike Brown, um, playing with him and him and Ashton and things like that in the backfield. Uh, they just make you feel comfortable. They just make you feel like you just need to do your job. You're not trying to cover someone else's and. I guess that's that's the best bit about working a team and things like that and trying to do your job to the best of your ability. Yeah. I just have a quick question on on Mike Brown, really. Because obviously, I mean, you, you guys have um, been played together, I guess, for the last like, God, God, God knows how many years. I just have a quick question on, I guess, your relationship yeah. between you two um, and how you guys sort of, I guess, spur, your, spur each other on like learn from each other uh, and a, a bit about what you think about Mike as a, as a person really as well. Yeah, it's always an interesting question this because I don't know, playing in the same position, people maybe think that we wouldn't get on and things like that. But actually we, we get on really, really well. well um, I've learned a lot from him in my career and although he's played above me I've still had a lot of opportunity to play and him being there meant I learned how to play on the wing kind of properly rather than just oh, go on the wing and you'll do okay it's like no you know how to play on the wing um, and I suppose playing fullback like we like playing with each other because we we both read the game in quite a similar way and obviously I've learned a lot from him throughout my career so I know what he likes and I can kind of manage my game around what he likes to do and where he likes to go, and I'll go and fill those other positions. So yeah, we we've learned, I've learned a hell of a lot of him, and we get on really well. I mean, we've known each other for twelve years now, so um, he's an unbelievable competitor. I know he's he's what 30, 30, 34, 35 years old, and he's he's still able to produce a level of performance most weeks so he's he's an unbelievable player and his his pedigree kind of speaks for itself so yeah it, it, it's good fun playing with him you you can always rely on him you know he's going to do his job to the best of his ability and he's always going to fight for for every little battle he's um he's quite aggressive 
at times that he'll, uh, yeah. <laughs> he'll, he'll he'll throw himself about at times you just got to calm him down but um, no he's been an unbelievable player for England and Queens yeah I mean I was just like is he because obviously watching him play I guess on a game day he does seem like a psycho on the pitch is he the same in training or is he like more reserved and laid back or does he just still just absolutely go for it um we we don't really do a huge amount of like contact training and like matches we do a lot of kind of like what we call like shoulders on so it's like yeah. a shoulder hit and then you like go down to the ground and things like that um yeah i mean it depends what training session you're in like on a monday we normally just do like a nice chilled walk through go for our patterns and our plays a Tuesday would build up so it gets quite intense. We do a bit of contact and then Thursday is sort of going through your reps and things for the weekend. So yeah, on that on that Tuesday it gets uh, gets pretty pretty competitive and <laughs> yeah, he's one not to shy away from that. So nice. Cool. Awesome. Well, um yeah, just to wrap up then, thank you so much, Ross, for coming on the um podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Um, yeah, all of those no stories that you told us, so, so interesting. Um, getting a bit of insight into what it's like at Quinns, especially for us Quinns fans, me and Maliki, maybe not so interesting for Max in being a Saris <laughs> fan. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you so much. And um, yeah, we'll let you go now and get back to, to looking after your kids and um, hope it's not, um, you know, they don't run you around too much. <laughs> <laughs> can, we ask, can we ask one final question? Yeah. Yeah. So, wh- where do you think uh, Quinns are going to finish in the Prem next season? One word answer, please. <laughs> where are we going? Top four. <laughs> Which, place? Which place? Which <laughs> place? It doesn't matter. Top four, and then you finish one. In the end. <laughs> <laughs> so, one, one's the answer. Okay. Love it. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just to remind everyone, um, we are again on um, YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So, you can find us on all three of them. And the new website will be up very, very soon. So, do keep an eye out for that. If you haven't followed our social media, go and follow us um, at, at Much Do About Rugby. And uh, we will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much, Ross, again. And yeah. Bye. Rugby.